Hi, hello, vanakkam and welcome back to Little Sla YouTube channel. This is me, your son Shanmugam. In this video, we are going to see about the Apache Tomcat. Why do we need Apache Tomcat? And what is an Apache Tomcat? And how does Apache Tomcat works? So before we move, we move on to the video, this is me, your son Shanmugam. If you have not subscribed to our channel, please do subscribe to Little Sla YouTube channel. Like, comment and question your feedbacks in the comment section. So, what is Apache Tomcat and why does Apache Tomcat has come into the world of technology? So, in the previous days, we would have seen the web pages where we would see a lot of HTML pages which are static. So, we cannot interact with most of the web pages which we had in the earlier days. And then, slowly, we have started to adapt into the pages where we can interact in the client side where we, if we enter our name, we can get a prompt response that to welcome us with our name that we have entered. And then slowly, we have moved into a page where we have totally changed the face of the internet, which is the dynamic web pages where we were able to book a ticket, or where we were able to chat with other person, and we were able to make most of the dynamic interactions in the internet and that is possible and that was possible is because of the Apache Tomcat. So let's now see what is Apache Tomcat. So Apache Tomcat is an open source Java servlet container which implements the Java servlet, the Java server pages and Java expression language specifications. And Apache Tomcat provides a web server environment in which the Java code can run making any essential component for building and deploying Java-based web applications. So what are the key features of Apache Tomcat? So Apache Tomcat supports the latest Java servlet, Java server pages, the JSP, and expression language specifications. And it provides a lightweight, efficient runtime environment for applications, for web applications. and Apache Tomcat can be easily configured and extended using a variety of plugins and modules and it can be used as a standalone web server or integrated with other web servers such as Apache HTTP server or Microsoft IIS. So to use Apache Tomcat, we will need to have a Java runtime environment installed on our machine which we normally call as JRE. So we can find that when we install the Java in our machine. So we must need a JRE to use Apache Tomcat and we can then download the Apache Tomcat distribution file from the official website and follow the instructions for installation and configuration. And once Apache Tomcat is installed and running, we can deploy our Java-based web applications to it by copying the application files to the web apps directory in the Tomcat installation and Tomcat will automatically detect and deploy the application, making it available for use. So in our previous section, we have seen about the word, the word called Java servlet container or Java servlet. So what is a Java servlet container? So a Java servlet container is a software component that provides a runtime environment for Java servlets. And what is a Java servlet? A Java servlet is a Java class that can be used to extend the functionality of a web server by generating dynamic content, processing requests, and handling other tasks that are typically performed by a web server. So for any Apache Tomcat to execute, we might need a Java servlet. And this Java servlet is basically a Java class that can be used to extend the functionality by generating dynamic content, processing requests, and handling any other tasks that are typically performed by a web server. And this Java servlet container manages the life cycle of servlets, including loading and unloading them, and providing them with runtime environment in which they can execute. In fact, it provides services such as security, request routing, and resource management. And these Java servlet containers are often used in combination with web servers to provide a complete runtime environment for Java-based web applications. And some popular Java servlet containers include Apache Tomcat, Jetty, and Glassfish. 
So to use a Java servlet container, we will need to have a JRE again, the same one which we dealt with Apache Tomcat. So we must need a JRE installed on our machine and then we can download and install a servlet container of our choice and deploy our servlets to it by copying the servlet class files to the appropriate directory in the containers installation and the container will automatically detect and deploy the servlets making them available for you. So this is something similar to Apache Tomcat. So we saw about the word called runtime. What is a runtime or what is a runtime environment? So a runtime environment is a software environment in which applications can be executed and in fact it provides the necessary resources and tools for any application to run which includes the libraries, the runtime libraries and any other dependencies. So a runtime environment typically includes a virtual machine or interpreter that executes the application's code and manages its resources and it also include any other tools and services which are required by the applications such as memory management, networking and input or output. So any programming language and platform have their own specific runtime environment. For example, the Java runtime environment, the JRE, which we call is used to execute Java applications and the .NET runtime environment is used to execute applications return in any .NET framework. And in fact, this runtime environment is often transparent to the user as it is responsible for executing the application and managing its resources behind the scenes. However, it is an important component of the application execution process and it is necessary for the application to run properly. So let's now move on to the next topic which is a very crucial part which is how Apache Tomcat works. So Apache Tomcat as, again, as we have already seen is a Java servlet container that runs on top of a JVM which provides a runtime environment in which the Java based web applications can be deployed and run. So, when a client, which is a web server, when it sends an HTTP request to a web server, which is running Apache Tomcat, the web server forwards the request to the Tomcat container, and the Tomcat container processes the request and generates a response, which is then sent back to the client through the web server. So, we will see a high-level overview of the steps, which is involving the process. So. The first step is a client or the browser sends an HTTP request to a web server running Apache Tomcat. The second step is the web server receives the request and forwards it to the Tomcat container. In the third step, the Tomcat container processes the request and determines which Java servlet or Java server pages should handle the request. In the fourth step, the selected servlet or JSP generates an HTTP response based on the request. And in the fifth step, the Tomcat container sends the resp response back to the web server. In the sixth step, the web server sends the response back to the client. So we have seen from steps one to six, like how does the Tomcat works. So Apache Tomcat uses a number of components to handle requests and generate response including servlets, JSPs and filters. In fact, it provides a number of configuration options that allow us to customize the behavior of the container and our web applications. So when we were talking about Apache, like how, how does the Apache Tomcat works, we saw a topic or we saw a word called JVM, the Java Virtual Machine. So what is a Java virtual machine? A Java virtual machine is a software implementation of a virtual machine which enables a computer to run Java programs. So that is what is the purpose or that is what the JVM does. In fact, it is a crucial component of the Java ecosystem as it provides the runtime environment in which Java applications can be executed. And this JVM is responsible for executing Java bytecode, which is the machine readable instructions that are generated by the Java compiler. And this JVM interprets the bytecode and executes it on the host machine, managing the memory, threads and other resources required by the application. And the JVM is designed to be portable 
which means it can run on any device that has a suitable implementation of the JVM. This allows the Java application to be developed and deployed on a wide range of platforms. Say for example, if we want to implement the JVM in a Windows machine or in a Mac OS or in a Linux or any other platforms we want, we can implement the Java or we can deploy the JVM. In fact, adding to it, to execute the Java applications, the JVM provides a number of services and features that are useful for developers such as garbage collection, security and support for dynamic class loading. So let's move on to the final topic which is why Apache Tomcat. So Apache Tomcat is a popular choice for running Java based web applications because it provides a lightweight, efficient runtime environment that is easy to configure and extend and some of the key benefits of using Apache Tomcat includes as we already said it is an open source and free to use and it is built on top of the Java servlet, Java server pages and Java expression language specifications which are widely used for building Java based web applications and it is a lightweight and efficient which is well suited for running web applications in a production environment and it can be easily configured and extended using a variety of plugins and modules and it can be used as a standalone web server or it can be even integrated with other web servers such as HTTP server, the Apache HTTP server or Microsoft IIS. It can be or it has a large and active user community which provides support and resources for developers. So overall Apache Tomcat is a reliable and flexible choice for running Java based web applications and it is widely used for organizations of all sizes. So now we might have a question. So what is it? So is Apache Tomcat a web server or an app server? So Apache Tomcat is a servlet container. Again, I'm saying it's a servlet container which is used to run Java based web applications and it is not a full featured application server, but rather a runtime environment that provides a way for applications to be executed. So as a result, Apache Tomcat is sometimes referred to as a web container or application server rather than a full featured application server and it is responsible for managing the life cycle of servlets and other web components and for providing services such as request routing, security and resource management. While Apache Tomcat can be used to run some types of Java based applications, it is not designed to support the full range of features and services that are provided by a full featured applications server. For example, it does not provide support for enterprise Java beans which we call as EJBs or any other advanced Java enterprise features. And if we need a full featured application server for any of our Java based applications then we might want to consider using Oracle WebLogic or IBM WebSphere or Red Hat JBoss. So these products provide a more comprehensive set of features and services for building and deploying enterprise grade Java applications. So with that we come to an end and I believe this video would have been very useful to you. Until we meet in another interesting video, it's bye from Asin Shanmugam and Little Slaw.